Welcome to the edge of the digital frontier. This is Cybersecurity Today. I'm your guide, Jim Wiggins, venturing alongside you into the ever-evolving landscape of our digital world. If you're joining us for the first time, prepare for an illuminating trek. Here, we delve into the complex labyrinth of cybersecurity, demystifying the jargon, unmasking the threats, and empowering you with the knowledge to secure your digital footprint. So buckle up and get ready for an enlightening expedition into the exciting realm of cybersecurity. Let's talk about our show for a moment. Cybersecurity Today is your one-stop shop for exploring the fascinating world of cybersecurity. As a seasoned professional in this industry, I aim to deliver engaging and insightful content. This 30-minute window into the digital world adopts a talk show newscast format where we dissect and discuss the latest developments, themes, and issues in the realm of cybersecurity. Whether you're here to gather new knowledge or if you're a fellow cybersecurity practitioner like myself, our program offers fresh perspectives and insight from industry leaders charting the course of this dynamic field. So what exactly is our mission? Well, we cater to a diverse range of interests and expertise levels from the novice to the seasoned pro. So whether you're just starting out or an industry veteran, there's something here for everyone. We're excited for you to join us on this journey. We hope that you enjoy today's show. Now, before we get started, let me provide you a quick overview of how the show is structured. We divide the program into two distinct parts. The initial segment we call Cyber Bytes. This segment focuses on the latest happenings and current trends within the world of cybersecurity. Then in the second part of our program, we've invited Mr. Jeff Felice, the president of CertNexus, onto the show. If you're contemplating deepening your cybersecurity expertise by obtaining a certification in areas such as cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, data science, or even data ethics, understanding the role and value of certain Nexus's certification program in your career path could be very helpful. We've invited Mr. Felice onto the show to delve into the mission of certain Nexus and how its certification programs contribute to enhancing an individual's proficiency in cybersecurity, AI, and data science. As the president of CertNexus, Mr. Felice brings a trove of knowledge and insight about these programs, making him an invaluable guest on Cybersecurity Today. We're delighted to have him share his expertise with us. Let's now get into our Cyberbyte segment. In current news, a global cyber attack targeting multiple federal agencies has been identified as a significant cybersecurity risk. The attack was carried out by a Russian-speaking ransomware group exploiting a weakness in the MoveIt software application widely used by both government and private sector entities. The Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Energy were among the agencies impacted. Although the breach appears to be opportunistic rather than targeted, the wide-scale nature of this attack highlights the need for improved real-time threat intelligence and more robust security measures. The FBI is currently investigating the breach and urging all users of the MoveIt software to familiarize themselves with the Bureau's cybersecurity advisories. In other news, the National Security Agency, NSA, and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, have published a guide to secure 5G standalone network slicing, titled 5G Network Slicing Security Considerations for Design, Deployment, and Maintenance. The document warns about potential threats such as tampering and misconfiguration of data posed by the segmentation of 5G networks into several virtual networks. To protect against these threats, the agencies recommend employing network slice specific authentication, an immediate certificate authority for lifecycle management, and a security vault to ensure data integrity and confidentiality, among other measures. The guidance also emphasizes the need for cloud hardening 
including the use of cloud identity and access management features. The agencies pointed out that current network slice specifications are insufficient and need to evolve to ensure adequate security. Those are some of the headlines that are making news. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with our guest, Mr. Jeff Felice, the president of CertNexus. I'm excited to talk to Mr. Felice about the personal certifications from CertNexus around areas such as cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, data science, and ethics. I hope you'll join us. We'll see you back here in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Josh Temple. You might have seen me on TV where I help folks turn their houses into dream homes. But forget construction. Parenting is the toughest job there is. So when you need help or advice, turn to the parenting experts at Boys Town. Welcome back to Cybersecurity Today. For our next segment, we're very excited about the guests we have here. In this world where digital technology drives nearly every aspect of our lives, cybersecurity has become an essential need, not only for businesses and governments, but for everyone. Knowledge and credentials in this field are more important than ever. This is where our guests organization comes in. CertNexus is a globally recognized leader in high stakes certifications. CertNexus develops its certification programs to meet the growing demands of emerging technologies their applications, and the skills required to utilize them effectively. As we all know, cybersecurity is an area of paramount concern, and it is at the core of one of several of different CertNexus's initiatives. By focusing on areas such as cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, data science, or data ethics, CertNexus ensures a future where everyone, no matter their profession, has the resources they need to remain secure and competitive in the digital age. Our guest today is at the forefront of this transformative organization, Mr. Jeff Felice, the president of CertNexus. He's a man with a mission, leading a team dedicated to filling the widening gap in IT and cybersecurity skills, empowering professionals through credentials and ensuring that businesses are prepared to face the digital challenges of the future. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jim, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. Absolutely. So I thought maybe we'd ask by having you talk a little bit about your background in both the IT and cyber certification training space. Can you speak to that for a couple of minutes? Yeah, Jim, I, I've been in the workforce development IT training space for over a quarter century now. Um, and over the last probably 15 years, much of that focus has been in cybersecurity and other emerging technologies. Uh, so most of that time has been spent in either product development or leading organizations that are focused on helping individuals develop their in, their skills in cyber and related technologies. Understood, thank you. So I'm curious, you talked about yourself, but can you now talk a little bit about CertNexus? Like what was the vision um, that you guys had when you started the organization and how has it evolved over time? Yeah, CertNexus was, uh, was incubated within our sister organization, which has been in business for over 40 years in this space. And we saw an opportunity where, uh, or really a need, if not an opportunity for uh, other cybersecurity certifications. Uh, this was over a decade ago and it, cybersecurity was really started, was not only on the map, but expanding um, across the globe and the needs for that as well. And so although we were partnered with other organizations do, and, and still are today that do provide other cybersecurity certifications, we saw some gaps where we thought there were needs that we could fill. Um, so that was the original intent for CertNexus. And then we've grown from there to expand beyond just cybersecurity to also focus on other emerging technologies, as you alluded to earlier, Jim, such as artificial intelligence, data science, IoT, and data ethics. All that really stemming from data, right? Whether we're actually generating data through IoT, engineering it for use through data science, using it for predictive outcomes in AI, or securing it with cybersecurity or ensuring its ethical use with data ethics. Understood, thank you. Can we now talk a little bit about CertNexus's mission? Like what, what, what is the mission of the organization? You talked a little bit about the, the need that you saw, but like what, what kind of gets you up every day from, from, a, from a why perspective? Yeah, it's a, it's a twofold mission. One is for organizations to help them bridge the ever growing, seemingly ever growing uh, IT skills gap. 
um, and the IT of being that umbrella, including um, cybersecurity, and to help individuals provide them, put them on a pathway towards rewarding careers in cybersecurity and other emerging technologies. So that's really what drives our organization, uh, which gets us up every day is really, although we're providing products that are uh, certifications and training that support uh, people's preparation for those exams, in the end, it's really a means to an end. It's really about people and helping improve people's lives. So let's assume you meet somebody on the street and they've never heard of CertNexus. How do you describe what the role that CertNexus plays in the technology and the cybersecurity industry? Can you speak to that for a minute? Yeah, we're, we're a bridge. Um, so, you know, if you think about the hiring practices, you know, traditionally they've been focused on, especially with business professionals and, and IT professionals, have been primarily focused in the past using uh, degrees from, you know, two and four year institutions. And with the advent of certifications, it's helped not only those individuals obtain those initial jobs, but also further their careers. So individuals, once they were in an IT profession, they would gain certifications that would validate their skills and knowledge to perform certain tasks and certain job roles. And now with the, the growing emphasis around skills-based hiring, we're seeing this as an entry point as, as well now. So not that two and four year degrees are still not of value, but an individual doesn't have to have a degree to enter the IT or cybersecurity workforce. They can earn a credential from certain Nexus or other organizations like certain Nexus, and again, provide them a pathway into a, a professional career in IT. Understood, thank you. So I know that there are IT certifications and there are cyber certifications, and it seems like you guys kind of fit between those two different areas. Can you talk for a moment about how you kind of see certain Nexus differentiating yourself from other companies that provide technology-based certifications, whether they're IT and or cyber? Yeah, there's, there's two primary points of uh, differentiation. Uh, the first is that we're focused on emerging technologies. Many other credentialing organizations are typically focused on in one area, uh, whether that's cybersecurity or cloud um, or other uh, technologies. And secondarily, we are also vendor neutral. So instead of teaching people uh, specific skills on a product, a specific product, we're teaching them knowledge and skills that are universally applicable. It, it, these are the skills that someone would need, again, if, for example, in cybersecurity, uh, to uh, understand what vulnerability assessment is, what incident response is, and regardless of the platform in which they're operating. So those are the ways we see ourselves uh, being unique. At the same time, we see our part, ourselves as part of a larger ecosystem. And there are other credentialing organizations like ours that really we're all banded together uh, in, in, in many ways to help, again, move the profession forward again, while enabling individuals to, again, um, have these really well-rounded and successful careers. That makes a lot of sense. I'm curious, like when I looked at your website, I was really impressed by the diversity that you had across your portfolio of certifications. I was curious, when you guys sit down and decide on a particular area, how do you figure out what you're gonna focus on? Could, could you maybe kind of explain that thought process? Yeah, so initially it's gotta fall under the umbrella of emerging technologies, which could be many technologies. Um, the, then we look at, is it a uh, likely to be a ubiquitous technology? Right? Is there going to be significant demand for skills within that technology? And then we look at, is it something that our ecosystem can support? Um, so a great example is, you know, we elected not to do anything around 3D printing. Is it going to be a ubiquitous technology? Yes, um, but it's not something that is easily supported in our ecosystem. Where something like artificial intelligence, ubiquitous technology, one where there's significant demand for skills, and it can be supported by our ecosystem. So having that understanding is the reason why we selected technologies, you know, beyond cybersecurity like artificial intelligence and data science. So with those emerging technology certifications that you alluded to and talked about, Jeff, I'm curious as to how you maintain certifications to ensure their currency and make sure that they reflect the latest trends and challenges. Can, can you speak to that for a moment, specifically when we think about like cyber? 
Yeah, and, you know, as, as many know in relationship to cyber, it's an ever uh, evolving domain. Um, you, you know, what we knew yesterday may be, if not obsolete tomorrow, it, has, it may have changed. So for us, we, we do a couple things. One is uh, we look at uh, the technology, but also the skills and knowledge to be proficient in a specific job role. So a, sp a specific piece of technology may change, but essentially what they're doing with that technology, may the concept or principle may remain the same. So what we do is we look at when do the, the, the technology change the knowledge and skills to needed to perform effectively in that job role? So we're always monitoring that through ever, uh, throughout the process. So it's an active, what we call uh, content curation process that is ongoing. And then what we do is we'll essentially put uh, stakes in the sand and say, you know what, this is a point in time where we need to uh, create a new version of the exam certification, et cetera. But it is a, a never ending process. There, the shelf life on exams are continuously getting shorter, which isn't inherently a bad thing. Um, it, it is, but it is um, in the requiring individuals to tend really to continually to validate their knowledge and skills where they might've been able to do that every several years, they may need to do that more often today. Understood, understood. Can we talk real briefly about maybe a success story or organization that you think has benefited from certain access as a certification? I think you were on the DOD 8570, is that not correct? That, that's correct, yes, yeah. So, um, and we've had the, the, the distinct pleasure of working with uh, through our you know, directly and through partners uh, with many uh, active uh, service members and transitioning service members, uh, and and so uh, a, a great story that um, I, I can share with you is we had a service member uh, who was uh, had not actually had a, a career in IT why uh, that why he was serv serving, um, but he he wanted to move into IT uh, as a career. Uh, he reached out to us directly. He said, you know, how can I get from where I am today um, as a mechanic? And I, and I had an affinity for that. My father was a, an auto mechanic uh, growing up. So um, I knew, you know, this person obviously had uh, good critical thinking skills, uh, had technical skills in another area, uh, had ambition, reached out to us directly and said, you know, how do I become a cybersecurity professional? And so we helped um, devise a, a plan for him and a pathway that included certifications leading up to our cyber sector first responder certification CFR that enabled him to uh, become a, uh, an incident responder and now is employed full time as an incident responder and really enjoying a career that he didn't know existed for him prior to entering the military, but came uh, coming out knew that this was something he wanted to pursue and now is successfully um, in that career path. Uh, that's a great uh, story. Thanks for sharing it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, I want to build on some of the stuff we've been talking about, both in terms of the impact that you just mentioned, and also some of the decision making that goes into where you guys head with the organization. I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the future elements. I'm, I'm curious, since we're talking about emerging technologies, since you guys are kind of on that leading edge, what kind of technologies and trends do you guys see today that are going to shape the future of the cybersecurity industry? And maybe how is Certain Nexus preparing for those, those changes or those particular challenges? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, Jim, I think the first thing that we have to recognize is that IT is no longer just in the domain of IT. Um, IT is now goes across an organization, which has enabled uh, you know, greater uh, productivity, uh, you know, enabled us to uh, produce better results for organizations. But with that is with greater access to technology comes greater responsibility. So within cybersecurity specifically, we see the need that everyone needs to participate, but also our cybersecurity professionals have to have greater skills and knowledge than they may have had in the past. Um, the adversaries are, are, you know, not waiting on the sidelines um, and saying, uh, you know what, we're not going to adopt these latest technologies. They, they are already doing that. They're looking at technologies like artificial intelligence and generative artificial intelligence, generative AI technologies like that we've seen with chat GPT and others. And they're starting to utilize those technologies. So what we're seeing is that 
the individuals we're working with that protect organizations, intellectual property and data, and their people and ensure their, the, the, the safety, the cyber safety of the organization, that these individuals have to broaden their uh, breadth of knowledge and skills. So where it might've been hyper-focused in a singular area, now that they have to understand these other technologies, understand how data, um, how it's collected, um, how it's uh, encrypted, um, how is it encrypted in transit? Um, how are, um, what threats, what vulnerabilities uh, may that present to an organization uh, is, you know, where it's stored, how it's stored, uh, who uses it, who accesses it. And then uh, the, the veritable plethora of, you know, uh, uh, potential threat vectors, you know, through vulnerability assessment, et cetera. And so it's, is again, as I shared earlier, it's an ever evolving field, but it's an ever broadening field as well. And so even in an individual job role, such as an incident responder, the, the, the breadth of knowledge is, is growing and also to these ancillary technologies as well. So without asking you to share any of your secret sauce, <laughs> can we talk a little bit about kind of areas of focus that you might be looking at or that are of interest to you? I mean, you mentioned uh, generative AI, that's all the rage right now, it seems yeah. like. I can't yeah. uh, look at a news portal without yeah. some article about ChatGPT or BARD or, but I'm curious, since again, you guys are on the cutting edge, where do you kind of think or hope that the industry might be headed? Anywhere any, anywhere in particular that you might be very fascinated by? Yeah, and yeah, and to that point, Jim, we, we are actually uh, releasing a, a generative AI uh, micro-credential later this month. Um, and so we see that is a, um, again, it sits under the artificial intelligence um, umbrella but it's distinct enough that we believe that there needs to be additional knowledge. Um, it's definitely even at the business level, um, right? Understanding what it is, right? I think, uh, you know, to date, many have seen ChatGPT as a, as a play toy, um, as, you know, a novelty. Uh, but the fact is, is it is, it is going to be tools like ChatGPT and BARD and others are going to be tools that, and are already being integrated into our work processes. So we need to understand how they work. You know how are they how how are they formed? Um, how are they may influence our our work activities? Uh, we also see alongside of that is data and AI ethics. Um, for the first time, we're in a in a world where machines are making decisions without direct human input, and so we really need to understand how are those machines learning? Uh, what's the data that we're presenting to them? What's their learning? What are the parameters they're using to, to uh, make those decisions? And, and make that transparent to our organization and understanding that to ensure that we're you, creating these technologies for good, um, right? They don't contain biases, et cetera. And ultimately that allows us to, like we have in the past, have used technologies that have not caused harm right, have been, been used for, again, whether it's enhancing productivity, um, minimizing risk to others, et cetera, doing the same with these technologies. So Jeff, with all that being said, how do you see the role of certain X's evolving in the coming years? You know, what we, our, our vision is for certain X's, again, is to meet that mission, right? In, in the end is helping organizations and individuals and what we recognize is that the pace at which technology is changing, that we need to continue to stay ahead of that, or at least at the forefront of that. We want to help organizations be successful with these technologies, again, use them for good. And we want to help individuals stay abreast of technologies so they're not dealing with techno stress, right? The, the, uh, the unknown, you know, how is this technology going to impact me? Instead, knowing about the technology, how to utilize these technologies, incorporate them into their lives, at work lives, and be successful with them. So for us, it's really an iterative process or you know, extending where we are today and just continuing to um, see the trends and, and, and hopefully adopting and developing products as those trends start to come to fruition and start to um, be needed in, in, you know, in mass um, across organizations across the globe. That makes a lot of sense, thank you. I, I, I have to make sure I ask this question because I'm sure somebody undoubtedly is watching this broadcast and going, hey, this sounds really great, but how do I, 
how do I go get certified? I mean, obviously they can visit the website, but is there, are there training programs that certain Nexus offers? Are there partners that you work with? I mean, I know a certification is typically an exam. How does one go and get artificial intelligence certified or data science certified or, you know, cybersecurity certified through certain Nexus? Can you speak to that for a minute? Yeah, so our exams are available globally in person or online. Uh, we partner with an organization, Pearson View, to deliver those exams in a secure manner. Um, but the, to prepare for those uh, exams, individuals have uh, several different options. Uh, they can elect to self-study um, with materials that they can uh, purchase uh, from ourselves or others. We do have a global uh, authorized training partner network with both commercial and academic training providers. And those organizations are uh, qualified by us uh, to deliver training that prepare individuals for the exams. And other individuals also, if they have uh, work experience that map to our objectives, we actually publish all of our exam objectives on our website. They're in the public domain. We want people to understand uh, what the objectives are that someone, uh, essentially the knowledge and skills they would need to be a machine learning engineer or an incident responder or other uh, uh, similar work roles within emerging technology. So an individual can download those uh, at no cost to them and they can uh, review those. And if they have comparable work experience or able to obtain the knowledge elsewhere, uh, they can uh, do that and, and set the exam. Or again, they can go through one of our uh, qualified training partners uh, to, to prepare for the exam as well. Understood, thank you. Last question for you. How can viewers learn more about Cert CertNexus and reach out if they have additional questions? Do you have a website or a phone number or what would be the best way for them to contact you? We, we do. Um, so they can go to CertNexus.com. Um, on the website, you can submit information. You can also email info at CertNexus.com. Um, and I always ask people if they're, um, if they, you know, don't feel like emailing uh, just a general inbox or, you know, haven't gotten what they need on the website, please, you know, reach out to me on LinkedIn as well. Uh, and uh, I'm always willing to respond to any questions individuals may have. Perfect, thank you. So Jeff, we are out of time. We want to thank you very much for coming in and talking to us about CertNexus and the range of certification programs that your organization offers. Great. Thank you so much, Jim. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. So that's going to do it for us today. We want to again thank our guest, Mr. Jeff Felice, for coming in and talking to us about CertNexus. We hope that you found the information in today's show interesting and useful and that you learned something new about cybersecurity. If you'd like to learn more about cybersecurity today and keep tabs on upcoming episodes, please check out our show's website at www.cybersecuritytoday.org. You can also reach out to us with questions or comments via email at contact us at cybersecuritytoday.org. We look forward to seeing you at our next broadcast. Thanks a lot for joining us. Stay safe and stay informed. Until then, goodbye.